This is video number 17 from digital-university.org. Um, in this video, we're going to present our final example uh, of mesh current analysis using the format technique. And as he mentioned in the previous video, the format technique is applicable uh, only when you have voltage sources uh, in your circuit. Now, when you have current sources or voltage and current sources, a lot of times you can handle those types of circuits by using what's called a super mesh current analysis. That will take care of it. We'll have some examples of those uh, starting in the very next video. But let's take a look at this problem. Here we have this type of circuit, a bridge circuit, and a 20 volt bridge source. Now look at how this is set up. Here we have a constant voltage source and in series with that is a resistor. Now if instead we had a current source and there was a resistor in parallel with that current source then you can convert this numerically into a voltage source with that same resistor, just call it R1, connected in series with that voltage source. And we'll, in another video, we'll consider uh, in detail how to do these source conversions. So the point is, is that if you have a circuit and you want to use the format uh, approach on it, but you see that at maybe at one or more places in the circuit you have a current source. Well, if the current source has a resistor in parallel with it, then you can convert that to a voltage source and go ahead and apply the format analysis. And again, as to exactly how that's accomplished, um, we'll have that in a future video, how to do this type of uh, source conversion. But for this problem, it's just another straightforward example of the format approach for mesh current analysis. So let's see how this is set up. We have three different loops here. One, two, and three. So let's just get started. We go around the first loop. We have current I1. And again, like we did in the previous videos, we're assuming that our mesh currents um, are proceed around in a clockwise direction. It doesn't necessarily have to be like that, of course. And if it turns out, for example, that with any one or more of these mesh currents, if we have the wrong direction assigned to it initially, when we numerically solve for the current, um, you get a negative sign by it. So that tells you then that if this comes out, for example, to be minus three-tenths of an amp, then you know that the mesh current actually goes in the opposite direction. And you can make your adjustments uh, at that point. OK, so here for this, we have current I1 goes through a 3-ohm, a 4-ohm, and a 2-ohm resistor. So move this aside for a moment. So we have 3 plus 4 plus 2 times I1. And then through this resistor of 4 ohms, I2 goes in the other direction. So we would have minus 4 times I2. And then for this 2 ohm resistor, I3 flows through in the other, in the opposite direction. So we have minus 2 I3. And in this loop, we have a voltage source. And what's more, the way it's drawn is that current I1, or mesh current I1, we depict this now as going through the battery from a lower potential to a higher potential. So that's a positive voltage jump, so it's a positive number. So we write it on the right-hand side as a positive number. If this was going in the opposite direction, so that we're going from a higher potential 
to a lower potential, then we would designate that as a minus over here. Okay, and let's look at the next loop. Here we have current I2 goes through a 5, 4, and 2 ohm resistor. So we have times I2. And then we have current 1 goes through the 4 ohm. Here I2 goes in this direction. Current I1 goes in that direction, in the opposite direction through the 4 ohm resistor. So we write minus 4 I1. And here for the 5 ohm resistor, I2 goes in this direction, but current I3 falls through in the opposite direction. So we have minus 5 I3. And there is no voltage source there, so that's just zero. And now in this loop we have current I3 goes through a 2, 5, and 1 ohm resistor. Like this. And then here then as we're going around through the 2 ohm resistor I1 flows through in the opposite direction. So we have minus 2 I1. And I2 flows through this resistor opposite in direction to I3. So we have minus 5 I2 and no voltage source. So it's equal to 0. And there we have our three mesh equations. And notice we have, of course, three unknowns, current I1, current I2, and current I3. Three unknowns, and we have three separate equations to solve for them. So at this point forward, the whole rest of the problem um, is just number crunching. The electrical part of it really is over. Now we just have to crunch out the numbers. And to do that, let's first of all, this is 7 plus 2 is 9 times I1 minus 4 times I2 minus 2 times I3 equals 20. All we're doing right now is just rewriting these three equations. And then here we have minus 4 I1 And here we have 9 plus 2, 11 times I2. That's a positive 11. And then we have minus 5 I3. That equals 0. And then here we have minus 2 times I1. minus 5 times I2 and then here we have 5 plus 3 plus 8 times I3 equals 0. So all we've done now is just rewritten these three above equations but we did it in such a way now so that all the coefficients for current I1 form this vertical column and same thing for I2, and same thing for I3. And now we're going to take these three columns of numbers and make a determinant with them. And that determinant will be a 3 by 3 determinant. And then that determinant will be 9 minus 4 minus 2. And then minus 4 plus 11 minus 5 and then minus 2 minus 5 plus 3. So there's our determinant. Now 
what we want to do is determine what the numerical value of this is. And we're going to use that then when we want to solve for I1, I2, and I3. So let's get that out of the way first of all. We expand it out with minors. So we're going to have 9 multiplied by this 2 by 2 determinant, which we determine by covering up the row and the column that 9 is in. And let's try to bring this into better focus. So we have 11 minus 5 and minus 5, 3. Let's see, hopefully you can see that all right. 11 minus 5 minus 5, 3. And actually, no, we made a mistake. When you're going through doing these problems, it's very easy to make uh, mistakes. This is an 8, not a 3. So replace this with 8. So now let's go back. So it's minus 11 minus 5 minus 5, 8. minus this next number, which is negative 4. So that's going to be plus. And let's see. We're not doing a very good job keeping things in focus. OK. There's 9 times the first 2 by 2 determinant. Then it's minus the next number, which already has a minus sign. So that's going to be plus 4 times this 2 by 2 determinant. And again, cover up the row. I'm going to cover up the column, cover up the row, and we have minus 4, minus 2, minus 5, 8. And then we have minus 2 with this 2 by 2 determinant. Cover up that column cover up that row, and minus 4, minus 2, 11, minus 5. OK. Now, let's see. This is 88 minus 25. Looks like that will be 63. And here we have negative 32 minus 10. That's negative 32 plus minus 10. So this is minus 42. And again, we had negative 32 minus a positive 10. So that's minus 32 plus minus 10, minus 42. And let's look at this one. Here we have 20 minus negative 22. So that's 20 minus negative 22. Or that would be 20 plus positive 22. So that has a numerical value of plus 42. OK. So what do we have? We have 9 times 63 minus 42 times 4 and 42 times minus 2. So you have minus 6 times 42. And let's see if you go to the calculator. I think this is 567. And 6 times 42, 252. So subtract those, and we get 3, 1, 5. So the numerical value of this determinant, write it up here, 3, 1, 5. Okay, now 
finally we're in a position to determine I1, I2, and I3. Now to determine I1, here we have these three columns of numbers here, here, and here. Now to determine I1, we're going to make a determinant, but this column of numbers, the I1 column, gets replaced by this column of numbers. So I1 equals 20, 0, 0. And then we have minus 4 plus 11 minus 5 and then minus 2 minus 5 and plus 8. And we divide that by 315. That is I1. So let's see what we have. We have, again, cover up the column and cover up the row that the 20 is in. And we have 20 times this. 11 minus 5 minus 5, 8. Eleven minus five and minus five eight. Okay, and then we have minus this number that's plus four. And let's see now for this, this is going to be interesting because we have these two zeros sitting right here. So we have it cover up the row, cover up the column. Now can you see that okay? We have zero zero and negative 5, 8. So that 2 by 2 matrix is 0 because we have 8 times 0 and 0 times minus 5. So this is just 0. We have minus 2. And let's see, when we make this subdeterminant, cover up the column and row, and again it's 0. You see we have 11 minus 5, 0, 0, so this is 0. Minus 2 times 0, so that's 0, that's 0. Here we have 88 minus 25, and again that is 63. So here we have, this is equal to I1. equals 20 times 63 divided by 315. And let's see, 2 times 63 would be 126, so this is 1260 divided by 315, and that's equal to plus 4. So there, without too much bother, we were able to determine what current mesh current I1 is. Let's go up to here. I1 equals plus 4. Okay, same procedure, no tricks, um, to for determine I2 and I3. I don't think we have time to do that in this video. So come back. Join us in the next video. We'll try to wrap this up as fast as possible. Find out what I2 is and I3 is. And then when we do that, go back to our original circuit then and determine the currents for all of these resistors. So come back, join us for the next video, and we promise we'll get this taken care of as quickly as possible.